Hey guys, and welcome to my corner. I'm so excited that you have decided to come along this journey with me to recreate the J.W. Anderson patchwork cardigan, also known as the Harry Styles Today Show cardigan. I am so grateful for all the comments and for the messages that people have been giving me on social media. I'm so happy that you guys enjoyed my work. And here is the long-awaited tutorial, step-by-step, -step, start to finish, of what I did to make the sweater. Now I know that Jonathan Anderson has released the pattern, but I know that some people who are very new at knitting, like me, uh, don't know how to read patterns, so I did a very simplified version, and that's what I'm going to be teaching. It looks very similar, but I will explain some of the differences in the original to my version, but it comes out with a really amazing result, and I just, I hope that you like it at the end. So I got my Hamilton shirt on, I'm ready to be streaming it. I've never seen it live, but I know every single word and you best believe that I will be singing along the entire time. So if you're a Hamilton fan, please comment below your favorite song because I'd like to know. So let's get started. Here's some materials you'll need to complete this project. Size seven needles, you'll be needing four red and black yarn, three orange, green, yellow yarn, and one blue yarn. Six one inch black buttons, one tapestry needle, a measuring tape, a ruler, and scissors and paper to measure out your square. Before we actually get started with knitting, I wanted to talk to you guys about yarn because that was my most asked question in the comments was, what yarn did you use? This particular yarn, which is the exact one that I used in my original sweater, is size 6 yarn. And I will be linking that along with all the materials that I used below. And Jonathan Anderson in his official pattern said that you should be using 90 meters of 100 gram yarn. And what that means is that the bundle contains 90 meters of yarn and it weighs 100 grams. Now I know that not all craft stores near us may contain in these colors the exact numbers, but if you want the closest thing that you can get to the original sweater, the chunkiness and you know the warmth and the bulkiness, uh, I recommend sticking close to those numbers. But if you live in a part of the world where it's not as cold, I recommend using a lighter yarn because this sweater does get hot. So, and just depending on if you want it to be as chunky or maybe you want it to be a little lighter, uh, just go with lighter yarn if that's what you're looking for, but if you want the same chunkiness, the same warmth, everything, I recommend sticking close to those numbers. And also, he used wool in the original sweater, and these are acrylic which can be washed, whereas the wool is usually dry clean only. The size of the squares I make are 5 by 5 and a half inches, but please keep in mind that this is for a size medium, so if you need to adjust the size of your square, bigger or smaller, Measure out your square and use your scissors and paper to cut out a reference. For day one, we'll be starting out with the orange square. And first what we're going to do is unwind our yarn. And when we unwind our yarn, we want to be able to take out enough to measure 20 inches so that we have enough to make our stitches. And then taking the side that's attached to the ball of yarn, we're going to do a loop. So I'll do that again, a loop, and we're gonna hold it. And then we're gonna take another loop, and we're gonna come in through the back. And then you're just gonna pull. And then we're gonna adjust it, and we're gonna make sure that it's not too tight or too loose for it to come out. So now we're ready to cast on our stitches and the part that's attached to the ball of yarn, we're gonna put it in between our index and our, and our middle finger. And with the other two fingers, we're gonna grab and bring our thumb around. So grabbing, bringing our thumb around. So to cast off your stitch, Bring your needle underneath the piece of yarn closest to you and you're going to bring it underneath and pull it to the piece furthest from you. 
and bring it underneath and pull. And then we adjust it, make sure it's not too tight nor too loose. And we're gonna do it again. So grabbing the yarn with these two fingers, holding with these two, bringing our thumb in. We're gonna go underneath the one closest to us, then bringing it to the piece furthest, going underneath again and pulling. And we're gonna be doing that to cast on all the stitches that we need to get going. To get a five by five and a half inch square, you'll need to do this 16 times. You can adjust if you have made your square bigger or smaller, or if you're using lighter yarn, you might need to do more stitches. A simple trick to make sure that your stitches don't fall off is to keep your index finger on each new stitch that you make. And then it's 16. So now that we have the 16 stitches, we're ready to start knitting. So the hurdle stitch pattern, we start off with a knit, a row of knit stitches. So we bring our needle into the back. We take the yarn that's attached to the ball. We take that yarn, we wrap it around. And we pull it forward and then we slip that stitch off and there's our first stitch and this tail sometimes likes to come out so we kind of have to hold it to make sure it doesn't come out we keep it to the back and so we'll do that again we bring it in through the front to the back take this yarn wrap it around pull it to the front and then slip that stitch off. And we keep doing that for all the stitches. And make sure that you leave a good amount of room. So you're not knitting at the tips, which can cause your stitches to become too tight, or you can accidentally drop one. And we're gonna keep doing that for all stitches and make sure that we leave enough room so that we're not running out of needle Okay, and there's our first row of knitted stitches. And now what we're gonna do is we are going to turn our work over to the back side, and we're gonna do the same exact thing that we did before. So it's gonna be a knit stitch. You're gonna put it in through the front to the back, bring that yarn over and bring it to the front and slip the stitch off. And we're gonna keep doing the same thing that we did before.
Okay, now that that's the second row, we're gonna turn it back over. And this row is going to be different because it's knit one, purl one, which means the first one is gonna be the knit stitch that we've been doing. So we bring the needle in through the front to the back, bring the yarn around, bring it forward, and slip the stitch off. Now for the purl stitch, what we're gonna do is we're gonna bring our yarn to the front. So make sure that our yarn, let's make sure that we have enough yarn. Bring it to the front and you're gonna put it in through the front. Wrap it around and bring it to the back and release the stitch. And then you're gonna bring it back, the yarn to the back, do a knit stitch like we've been doing And you're just gonna repeat that till you get to the end of the row. So put it in through the front, wrap it around, go to the back. Then bring it to the back. Go in through the front to the back. Bring it to the front. Now we're gonna turn our work over and do the same row again. So it's the knit stitch, so we'll be going in from the front to the back, bringing our yarn over and bringing it to the front and releasing the stitch. And you bring it to the front. Bring the yarn over, pull it through the back and take it off. And we're going to do the same thing that we did before. Now that we've completed the last row, we're gonna turn our work over again and start the pattern again with a knit stitch. If one of your stitches does happen to fall out, don't panic, just carefully try to put your needle back in through the hoop and keep going. Now that we're familiarizing ourselves with the pattern, I wanted to include it written out so you can actually see what we're doing. So row one is all knit stitches as well as row two. Row three is knit one, purl one, and the asterisks just mean that you're gonna repeat what's inside of them until you get to the end of the row. So you do a knit stitch, then a purl stitch until you do all 16 stitches. And you do the same thing with row four, and then you go back to row one and repeat the pattern again. This is a slight variation from the official pattern, but it still adds a similar texture. Okay, so now that we have an almost completed square, we can see that both sides, this side and this side, are exactly the same. And now we're going to finish off our square. Now 
we're going to be doing the same pattern that we were before. So knit one, purl one. Oh, that's fine. Because we're not perfect. Also, please remember to be kind to yourself, and if you find that your wrists are hurting or that your fingers are cramping up, just know that it's totally okay to take a break. Just remember to keep track of where you left off. And there we have our completed square. We're gonna keep it like that for now because in my second video, I'm gonna teach you how to change colors so that you don't have to stop and you can just go keep going to the second square because we're gonna be working in columns and that just will make it easier in the long run because you won't have to sew each individual square. Lastly, here we can see that the square did in fact end up being five by five and a half. Okay guys, thanks for following along. Be sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my page to stay updated. I'd also love to see your progress so you can tag me on any of my social media and if you have any questions, feel free to drop a comment below or direct message me. See y'all next time.